In this video, I wanted to give you guys a kind of a background on me and my origin story of why I wanted to become a baseball coach and a baseball trainer, training pitchers day in and day out, and how I made that my passion. So it all starts uh, growing up in Ca Castle Rock, Colorado. I grew up there my entire life, played baseball throughout the community, played on a series of teams, just like everybody else, you know, played rec ball, played travel, uh, club ball, play travel ball, play all these types of things. And I was always one of the better, if not the best player on my team. And I don't try to say that selfishly, but it's just kind of the way it was. Right. And really things started taking a turn for me about sophomore year of high school. So when I got into my sophomore year of high school, I wasn't playing as much as I had normally played. Basically, every team I had ever played on, I was a starter, starting pitcher, starting third baseman, shortstop, first base, wherever. I was always in the lineup, no matter what. And about my sophomore year, uh, this thing started to change for me, and I couldn't really understand how to bear it. And it basically kind of some came down to my freshman year, um, a coach came in to be the varsity assistant, a, ki a coach that I had grown up knowing, played football for when I was in third grade. He became the varsity assistant. So I come in and the very, my sophomore year where this all begins starts. Um, the coach's son was a year younger than me and played the exact same positions as me. He was a pitcher. He was a third baseman. Well, yada, yada. We were pretty similar builds. Pretty similar level of skill. I would argue that I was a little bit better, but that's neither here nor there. The sun started getting was getting way more playing time over me, getting more starts, getting more ABs, getting more innings. And I didn't know how to handle that because it just was it was brand new territory for me. And one day I kind of snapped. And I told the kids just straight up, like, the only reason you're playing as much as you do is because your dad's in this varsity assistant. And, you know, it wasn't like I was saying anything that wasn't known. It was very well known throughout the program that it was a very daddy ball, politic oriented program. So that if you paid a lot of money or your dad was a coach in the program, you usually had a leg up. Um, flash forward to my junior year. And I don't, I kind of knew like, all right, there's something going down, but I go in to do the tryouts, do trials like normal, you know, didn't think anything of it, you know, going to make the team no matter what. I made the, you know, spring break trip for the varsity as a sophomore, um, the year prior, my sophomore year. So I made that trip. I was one of the guys in my class, um, go through tryouts, don't think anything of it, but then the day of tryouts, I go in, check out the uh, roster on the sheet, and my name's not on the sheets. And I couldn't tell why. I thought it was, I literally thought it was a typo. <laughs> and I go find the head coach, and I find him in the weight room because he's one of our gym teachers. And I just straight up, I'm like, hey, my name wasn't on the roster. Is there a mistake? Something wrong? You know, what was going on? And he ended up basically telling me, you know, we believe that there are just guys that are better than you on the varsity team that you won't get playing time over. And there are guys on the younger level that we believe you're better than, but we want to give them reps and you're going to suck away innings. So we decided to cut you. Now, that was the story I was given. Bear in mind, my head coach did not look me in the eye one single time. The entire time he had, we had that conversation, he looked straight at the ground, at the floor. The entire time he was giving me this reason as to why they cut me um you know I, I went to the jv coach he kind of gave me a similar story but it was a little more like i kind of know this is bullshit you know you know i'm, I'm here are my orders and i'm just following through on what the orders were so i didn't i you know i didn't play my spring of my junior year and it was tough you know i didn't go to school for two days after because it was you know something that you know baseball had always been my identity Right. And I didn't know how to cope with not having it, you know, or being told like you are good enough or you didn't fall in or as I should say, you didn't fall in line the way we want you to. And so I go, go back, 
you know, I, I did a travel ball team, got some, and then I got a bunch of offers. That's where I started kind of getting my confidence back. I make the team my senior year after I kind of do the whole, you know, I'll, I'll be a good boy this time around. So I make the team and I didn't pitch at all really my senior year of high school. I pitched a third of an, a grand total of third of an inning. You can find it on Mac prep this day. Um, but I did hit and I was a really good hitter throughout the, my time there. You know, I was probably, I had the second best batting average on my team behind a guy who ended up getting all state that year. And about halfway through the season, it started to shift again. I was being, I was doing a little too well for my coach's taste. And, you know, I was doing better than the kid whose dad was the assistant coach. Well, come about halfway through the year, all of a sudden I get told by my head coach that we're going to sub you out. You're going to get two ABs in this game against um, Fairview High School. It was. I had my two ABs and they subbed me out for this freshman who they're like, oh, we just like this kid, you know, you know, no matter. And then slowly, all of a sudden I stopped hitting. I wasn't the DH anymore. I wasn't getting the ABs I was prior earlier in the year. And my batting average went down and it kind of just put a, put a cap on a very lackluster high school career. And now I don't want to look at the high school career and make it my, some of my parts, but I just want to start, like, get you guys to know where what the origin is. So I flash forward to my first year of college. I go to Colorado Northwestern Community College up in Rangeley, Colorado. It's in the middle of fucking nowhere. And I go there as a walk-on, you know, as a walk-on, because I didn't have any stats to, you know, prove myself to. I didn't have any film. I didn't have any anything like that. And this is 2012, so this is not, we're not nearly in the era uh, that we are today with the track mans, with the PBRs, with the everything game filmed the way it is today. So I go, I get a walk on spot or try out spot at Colorado Northwestern and I do pretty well. I do pretty well, but I also have this little mindset thing where like I, I got the yips playing catch. Like I, could, I couldn't play catch for the life of me. And I go through the fall with Colorado Northwestern and then uh, at the end of the fall season, they do all because the, they brought in like, oh, there was like 70, 80 kids on the roster. And I come into my meeting with the coaches and they said like, look, we love, we like you as a player. You're really good, but we just overcommitted to these kids that were from California. So there I was again, <laughs> you know, two times in three years, I had been cut from the baseball program and, you know, I just, you know, it's tough because you don't know how to handle it and you, you know, and I guess you can just kind of go the way I did and, you know, you work through it because you know that you're good enough. You know that you can do it. You know that you can, you know, be a positive piece of, of a of a community. And, you know, those are my two origin stories. I ended up go playing baseball in uh, Kansas for two years in college, junior college. And then I went to um, Concordia University in Nebraska and finished up my career there. You know, what not, would I ever like brag about my college career? Absolutely not. Like it wasn't just wasn't great. And, you know, there are a lot of things going against me and I acknowledge that. But I also acknowledge that there were a lot of things that I could have done better. And that's kind of my reasoning or is my reasoning for why I do this is I want to make guys so good that no one can ever turn them down. Right. You guys, because people that I work with, I want them to be so good that no level of daddy ball, no level of politics, no level of, you know, over recruiting, you know, you will always be one of, if not the top guy on a program or on a team. And I think everyone deserves that. If they're willing to put the work in, they deserve to be the top guy. They deserve to be, you know, one of the, of the best on the team that, you know, if you're not playing, you better hope it's just for a day off because once people, once you're not playing, people start looking like, what the fuck is, are these coaches doing? They're crazy. Right. So that's my goal in this is to make, you know, my mantra is just make people undeniable. You know, there's no, no one can ever deny you playing time. No one can ever deny you innings because you're too good to be deniable. And that's my, the way I approach my coaching style and the way I approach each and every athlete that I work with, if I can make you so good that no one can, absolutely nobody can say no to you, then I've done my job. So, you know, that's my story. 
why I it, I do what I do. If my story is compelling to you and it's, you know, I'm become someone that you might want to work with because I have a personal pride in everyone that I work with, shoot me a DM on Instagram. I'd love to get to work with you, teach you how and tr- teach you and train you how to be the best baseball player you can be. And like I said, make you undeniable.